Hey guys, how are you? Yeah, we're good. We're now doing our, we're into the ninth hour of the stream. Oh, that's easy. It's still early. Yeah. Right? yeah, still early. Just three yeah. times this to go. I think we've got James with us as well. So for this session, Eleni is going to be operating the microscope. Right, Are you able to hop into the Zoom call on your own account and share the screen when you have a moment? And we'll just have it going in the background. And you can put slides up. For the first 15 minutes, um, if we can get uh, James online, I have some interview questions for him. Similar to the ones I uh, asked you, Hunter, last year, because of course you were here last year for our microscopy session. I was, yes. Lots of fun. Yeah, and uh, are you in the lab this time or where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm joining you from my home lab today. It's a lot more uh, quiet and less uh, work to be done. So, yeah. yeah, okay. And um, well, we're joined by a bigger and more powerful microscope this year than last year. Yeah, beautiful. Front and center of the screen. I love it. Huh? Yeah, it's been here as our mascot and our prop all day. Um, we also have IMD hoodies this year, which contain four mascots. Wow. Uh, so here we Hello. go. Hello. Hi. I'm Hi, sorry. James. I'm having some technical difficulties with my headphones. So ah, don't worry. I can, I can relate. But we're with you now. So thanks for joining the microscopy session. So yeah, Eleni is going to be our microscope uh, operator and we'll start getting some slides up in the Zoom call. Okay. Um, we've got 15 minutes, James, to ask you some questions. Uh, and then we'll just have a discussion and you guys can share videos that you think are cool. Yeah. Um, so the reason both of you here is you're both giants of microscopy Instagram is how I like to put it. Uh, you have over 100,000 approaching 200,000 followers each uh, on your various accounts at Microbial Ecology for Hunter and at Jam and Germs for James. And you're both also quite big on YouTube and bringing microscopy and microbes to you know thousands of people um here we go here's our little microscope here's jam and germs's account and you know i just think it's two great examples of a really really fascinating way to touch into loads of people's uh, content streams with really beautiful images um so i'll start with some questions for you uh, james what got you started with at jam and germs what made what got you going with the account well honestly it wasn't um it was like an accident. Let's mm. let's put it in that way. So, um, so I was taking a college course, and then we had to just do some microscopy to just assess the wastewater treatment uh, plant, like the health of the wastewater. And then I saw my first microbe under the microscope, and then it just it just blew my mind. And then mm. I like it was four years ago i think and since then i did nothing it just it was just microscopy and like two hours a week um uh, lab course wasn't enough for me so i got a microscope and i wanted to share my videos with my professors uh so i started on youtube first and then one of my friends um she was saying like i should get an instagram account and just start there and they made a mis like they made a joke about the gem like James's and germs and mm. I never thought it's gonna be something big so I you know like I started my account and it just it got a lot of attention and yeah it's been like almost four years and I keep doing that so and also like I have uh, probably hundreds of thousands of microbes in my home but I also have two cats and it's their mm. zooming time so i'm um, so sorry in advance you might see like cats jumping in oh yeah the jumping in i mean okay. so, yeah i had a cat for a while last year and it was just always coming across the zoom call interface yeah i so, I, yeah. I, I built a cage for my like overly expensive microscope so and they're just zooming on top of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> amazing um so yeah you said that this account started growing really fast or at least it got very big. Um, do you know who your main audience are? Is there kind of a demographic spread you can see um, it tilts towards or is it just completely diverse? So I think it's because of, uh, because my account is mainly in English, like yeah. in English. So I get, um, I think around like um, 30 something percent of my Instagram audience comes from the US mm. and I have like seven, eight per percent 
I'm sorry about the Oh, gap. we can hear them. No uh, worries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I have like um, 7 8% I think from the UK. So we can say like half of the uh, half of the audience is coming from the um, uh, English speaking countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay. And then the rest are just from all over the world, yeah, do you think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because on Instagram I think you can see the top 5. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that you started off, uh, you know, labs were not enough, and so you got your own microscope. Um, so I wanted to know what equipment did you begin with, and what equipment do you use now? Uh, so I started with um, uh, with a with the cheapest microscope on eBay. It was like um, I think one hundred sixty dollar. I mm -hmm. ordered it, and it was. Um, uh, let's call it non-branded, but it's like a, such a generic microscope. So if like anybody wants to start microscopy, they can just, you know, go and look for uh, compound microscopes. And okay. because um, also like we produce some microscopes uh, with uh, my, uh, like our YouTube channel. So uh, we have like pretty uh, standard objectives and stuff. So every budget microscope, they use the same optics um but the thing is with microscopy microscopy is um it's like an art you know you have to practice you have to um you know know how to prepare your samples and it's like it changes from microbes to microbe you know like and you have to know um like you have to experience all these things all these techniques to um get some good image with my with any microscope you know so it's like I'm really grateful that I was like I started with such a um, bad microscope actually because that uh, taught me a lot how to and you had to get good with it yeah okay yeah, yeah. and then I got um, so now I think I completed my light microscope adventures I got um, I have a Zeiss microscope at the moment so um, I'm using um, the IC uh, contrast and I have uh, fluorescence light um module for you know mm -hmm. like giving things under the uv light or uh, monochromatic light like blue green and red so, and are they just in your home yeah 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 like, nice yeah my cats were zooming on it yeah okay so I but so you... something around it to prevent the dust going inside of it yeah and yeah so yeah and are they do you just have a microscope room now in your house or is it uh, no, not really. It's just like in my living room. I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, um, I'm just um, my stay here in Poland is temporary. So I'm going to be in the US, I think in like uh, three months. Yeah. And then I'm going to get uh, probably a room. Okay. But so you're in Holland at the moment. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, we're in Holland. We could have done this in person almost. Poland, sorry. Poland. Oh, Poland. Sorry, I misheard yeah, yeah. you. That would have been just too good. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, one question I had for you next was um, what microbes do people seem to enjoy the most of the uh, ones you've posted? Um, I think people like to see, like, they like to see something dynamic. Uh, so it depends how um how you're just presenting your um micro let's say so people uh they love water bears for example but they mm. also love um stentors uh so we started um like we made some stentor videos and they gone viral and now everybody like knows about stentors it's like these are like giant microscopic uh you have stentors. one behind you james right Oh, oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh nice <laughs> not real size <laughs> yeah okay so yeah uh, that will help uh people wanting to answer my next question which is what advice do you have for people wanting to share microbe videos online uh just be original just follow your passion and just mm -hmm. do whatever you know makes you happy and that will be appreciated so like i don't think of my uh you know like um uh, like this audience, I don't think of it in a way that it just um, like it comes with your passion. So like mm -hmm. you, what you love and people appreciate it. So it's 
I'm not like seeking more followers, but I'm just seeking um, to do the thing that I love the most in life. And it's just a byproduct, you know, the followers yeah. or like anything that comes with it. So yeah. the authentic passion and joy happens to bring people to your account, but yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good advice. Um, and yeah, this is my final question before we go into a bit more of a free form discussion. Uh, what other microbe communication initiatives should we know about? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure about this thing because like, um, I think there's nothing else than, you know, like some social media. Mm -hmm. or like, am I getting a question correctly or? Well, I mean, you have, uh, I mean, there are other communicators that you might have uh you know want to point towards um i think also you mentioned that you've begun a new youtube channel more recently uh the yeah. microcosm yeah or didn't you yeah, it's, been get a, yeah. it's been two years yeah we two made, years now yeah. yeah we made over 100 episodes like 10 10 minutes yeah a long 100 episodes so it's like it's not that new but it's yeah we are just um it's wonderful so people can go check it out and uh i would recommend some scientists i can recommend um i'm sure hunter knows her because it, it was her yeah uh phd supervisor she is also my phd supervisor so it's like we share that one with hunter mm. and, and so people can go check books you know like uh from amazing scientists and i think um uh yeah i i think that's it Okay, nice. There I'm not nothing really like um there are some accounts, but um no one is doing this like in a big way. You no. know, like so we're starting that now. One of the things that I think someone said this year, last year was like, you know, space gets so many great films and videos and TV shows made about it. And it's not and microbiology doesn't quite have the same blockbuster presence with, you know long form film media yet uh so it's kind of how can we find ways to do that i suppose and get microbes on the tv more in a way that's positive and not just you know the zombies and plague yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i have i have a couple of projects going on so it's like okay uh you can probably we will get um um a, a series on a big network so mm -hmm. hopefully we're gonna you know reach to more people and it's because it's it's such an alien um environment you know like as you said like we know um we have so much publicity about space but we don't know anything about microbes yeah so, like when people think about microbes they think about like just blobs not moving you know staying and getting you sick and so i think like um we are changing that yeah and i think making films like the kind that you guys do is a huge hugely important part of trying to yeah engage and bring people into microscopy and microbiology are we able to uh join the camera uh, the microscope camera cool because i wanted to in this next stage uh a we're going to have some live images up on the screen um and b i wondered if you guys had um some videos of your own to share any of your favorite videos uh either from your accounts or sitting on your computer go ahead james i think you you should go ahead now it's i was speaking for 15 minutes so no no i already did this last year they're sick of hearing from me so let's uh <laughs> let's see what you got man <laughs> okay perfect uh so yeah i prepare some um some videos but should we should we start with this uh, so what do we have here Eleni? we'll just run through this one uh, penicillium. okay so this is a slide of penicillium and stained i guess with yeah some nice stains and i guess are these the the hyphae we can see running through here mm -hmm. yeah okay nice does it have a video version this one you took the videos before but i can't remember how we did that one yeah but this is a big yeah okay it's not much dynamic stuff to see but yeah we have a few like beautiful colored slides like this right. and i wondered have you you mentioned you had some uh what's the word fluorescence microscopy that you were attempting uh 
so how did you use that with the did you could you use it with any dynamic organisms or was it only with static things um like uh, i can i can use it with um with living organisms mm. also, like um i don't do photography so it's you know like everything has to be something living uh and i can actually yeah okay you can show some uh fluorescent light like images let me just pull them uh, from here. that one was very nice though i like that slide so yeah okay i can i can present can i share my screen you should be able to yeah if you click the share screen i think it's on the right yeah it is I'm not sure what you're seeing right now. Yeah, we can see a tardigrade surrounded by okay. maybe paramecium so, or something. Uh, so let's start with the fluorescent light microscopy. So we we were recently just making a uh, episode about phototoxicity, which is something you know, like with fluorescent light microscopy, it's it's a problem because you kill uh, microbes if you you know expose them to UV light, and there are some microorganisms they. Um, die quite beautifully. So we just, um, I think this Monday we shared a video of this. Um, so oops, this is a short video. I didn't realize that, sorry. Um, so the um, red things around here, they're like um, chlorophyll-based um, autofluorescence. Um, yeah, we have some moss leaves and some fung fungi hyphia. Here. Uh, so, so, what's the blue moving organism? Um, this is this is a microorganism called uh, Homolozoan, and uh, I'm sorry, these microorganisms are like uh, Lord Voldemort. You know, you don't <laughs> pronounce their name. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like um, absolutely necessary. So, just I'm butchering the names. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I have. Some other footage of it. So it's a it's a large single cell organisms in in a group called the ciliates, and it shows blue autofluorescence. I don't know why, but they're like probably some uh, proteins. They're um, emitting this blue light under the under the UV. So that's its own fluorescence rather than yeah yeah. It's not been stained not, yeah. No, this this is um, these are all autofluorescence. So they are dying, and when they die, just you know, they explode like little galaxies and stuff. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, it is like a whole universe. I mean, I'm not sure if you saw the last talk by John Warhol, but he was saying uh, the microbes have stories, and we have to tell the stories. And I think, yeah, yeah, telling the stories of these organisms is something you both do really well um, in your microscopy. Is this the one that's behind you? This one. Or is this a different microorganism? Uh, no, this is uh, this is a stentor behind yeah. me. It's, um, I can also pull out some videos of them. Uh, so this stentor is um, a large single cell organism. They're quite common, and but they're also some of my favorite uh, microbes to view under the microscope. So let me, oops. So these are some, uh, can you still see the video? Yeah, we can. Some amazing colors here. Okay, perfect. Uh, so these are some stentor roselli and they are viewed under the um, polarized light. Um, and I have some other stentor species. This is uh, stentor amatistinus, and it has like this purple um, natural pigment, and it also ha has some um, algae living inside. It's uh, in the symbiotic relationship, so the algae using the sunlight and producing sugar and sharing some of the sugar with the host stentor. And in exchange, the center is just protecting them from the from predat 
predators because stentor is one of the largest organisms in the pond. So you want to be, you know, friends with him, mm. with them, so they can they can protect you. Um, so we. Have... I'm sorry. I'm just pulling some videos from um, from our microcosmos archives. Oh, no problem. So yeah, this is the one behind me. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. They're really beautiful. Is it playing or is it frozen for us? Uh, can you see? Oh, it might be frozen for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was... Ah, here we go. Yeah. Now it's doing it. Okay. Sorry. It's... Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. So is it covered in cilia then? Yes. Uh, moving it about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, um, you know, all the different symbiotic algae within it as well, the chlorella, the little green cells. Mm. This one's really cool because it has the, the circular um, manilifora macronucleus. So it looks kind of like a bead of rosaries. Those little clear dots are the, the nuclear apparatus. So it's really cool to see this just from a cell bio standpoint. It's such a massive creature and you can see its internal organelles. And those rows, those lines are the actual rows of cilia, which project out of it. You can see them really nicely at the top there coming out of the mouth. Beautiful, beautiful footage, James. Well done. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it moves just so gracefully. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, as I said, they can be quite big and they can like, uh, look at the size of this person. Yeah. And this is like, um, I think this is two millimeters in size mm. when it, uh, it extends fully. So we have some other ciliates. These are uh, Frontonia. Um, Hunter wrote a paper about Frontonia, I think, which one was that? Frontonia with, with, with... Uh, Frontonia vesiculosa, yeah. The largest one of the Frontonias. Have you found that yet, James, in Europe? Uh, not yet, not yet, but I'm, right, well, I'm, I'm waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, give me, you give me a call and Aveva will be very happy as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some healthy cross-Atlantic rivalry, I guess. No, 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 really, uh, it'd be great if you could find it because no one's found it before in Europe. It's only known from these really warm environments. So I found it here in Florida. It's known uh, in South America. So if James or somebody else, you know, on YouTube or, or Instagram can find it and post a video, it'd be a really cool record, the first for Europe. So that'd be really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it will. Yeah. But do we think it exists somewhere it's just not been found or could it just be it only exists on the American continent? Yeah, I mean, the, the stuff that we publish is it can thrive wherever it finds its preferred ecological niche. So, you know, theoretically, it should be able to thrive in, in parts of Europe where it uh, is warmer. It likes warm, shallow waters with a lot of, you know, stuff to eat, which Europe obviously mm. has. It's just as Europe has a bit, you know, cooler waters. But I think in a time period, you know, in the summertime, when you get warm waters, these things should thrive there. So... Only a matter of time till somebody finds it. Okay. So we need a warm country with lakes or shallow lakes. Yeah, shallow, um, you know, eutrophic freshwater ponds uh, or, you know, water bodies would be really ideal. Some kind of a swamp uh, mm. with water around, you know, 25 to 32 C would be uh, perfect for the Frontoni vesiculosa. And it's about a millimeter in size. So if you see it, you're going to know. It's okay. a very obvious feature. <laughs> so it's a very visible, visible microorganism. Very yeah, that's one of the things I think doing microscopy because at some point you don't need a micros microscope to just you know identify some uh, cells. For example, like if I see a paramecium, I can say like, okay, this is a paramecium just by looking at the um, you know tube or something because you know how they swim, how they move. So it's like if I see um, Frontonia, I would be like, okay, this is interesting. What is this? So. Yeah, so I'm just keeping my eyes open. But it's like in Poland, I think we, um, like it's quite cold, but um, still because uh, as Hunter said, like it's the, the theory is like everything is everywhere, but the environment selects. So um, Frontonia, this species of Frontonia should be everywhere, all around mm. the world, but it prefers to live in a certain environment. So if you find the environment, if you sample enough, you know, like um, environment in this organism's range, you will find it eventually. Mm. So with this lovely blue background you've got, are you just using a blue back uh, underlight or? Um, 
No, this is um, because um, this is a DIC footage, but with DIC, you need um, um, DIC illumination based on polarized light. Mm, so okay. you need to set um, two sets of filter, like with a correct angle to get it, get the DIC footage. But this blue footage is uh, when you set the DIC in a wrong way. So it just like, this is not a correct thing. So if you talk to, um, not a microscopist maybe, but like a, like an engineer, you know, they will tell you, okay, this is a wrong way to set it, but it looks beautiful. It's and so, like, if, yeah, okay. So you wouldn't do color. research like this, but for making nice images, it adds yeah. so much color. Yeah. Can you set it in such a wrong way that you get different kinds of color? Yes, exactly. Yeah. You can do that. I'm, I'm not sure if I can find any footage right now of that, but uh, yes, you can, you can do that. That's oh, one of the I cool think... things with Instagram. Some of the other accounts I follow, which do similar stuff to James and I, they'll publish on Instagram some crazy colored videos. And you think, you know, what the hell are you guys doing? But it looks so amazing. And it's such a unique technique. You almost want to, you know, have them write it in the description so you can kind of emulate it because it's really cool, cool stuff. Nice. nice. Uh... So we've got about 13 minutes left. Should we see if we can find anything in that soil sample? Yeah, do you want to... yeah that's not yeah, so we basically have just some soil here in water, and we're just going to see if we can find anything alive in it uh, while we have a few more minutes. So I'll pop this over here, and we'll see what we can do. But in the meantime, feel free to show us some more lovely videos, because this will take a couple minutes to set up. Oh, yeah? Uh... Dave, do you have any um, sprossum semi-vorescence you can share? Uh, yeah, sure. Like when I'll I call it, I yeah. I'll, um, I'll tell the audience the story. So, so sprossum semi-vorescence is a really cool ciliate. It's well over a millimeter in size. It's full of symbiotic corella algae. And um, I found it years ago with Dr. Hanabe Vestica and my PhD supervisor, who's now James is as well. We found it in England. We flew to um, Sweden to find it there and show that this ciliate is looking the same and also has the same morphological signatures. So it was really neat, but it's very rarely recorded. So a really cool thing with social media, you know, James was literally live online doing an outreach thing for Journey of the Microcosms. And he found this ciliate for the very first time in his samples. So it's really cool and like a great example of how, you know, social media can actually produce some real science because that was, you know, a new record for his country. And somebody could be finding this in a totally different continent no one's before seen it in. So it was a neat bit of kind of collaboration there. And here's just a fabulous shot that James is showing now of this, this very ciliate from his samples. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's a big one. Yeah. And really cool too to have a you know a real discovery made live on uh, on YouTube. So that's just such a fabulous you know piece of science that James uh, was involved in for this particular species. Yeah, I was I was blown away because I didn't expect to find it, and it was like <laughs> just a live stream and yeah. yeah your reaction is so good. It was like yeah, something, and it took me like five seconds to realize. Yeah, anything that big, right? Yeah, yeah, that's like, only one thing it could be. Like, yeah. um, and this one has the manila form macronucleus as well, similar to the stencil we saw earlier. So it has those clear uh, bead-like circles. That's the, the nuclear apparatus, which is really cool. Um, I'm trying to locate some lower magnification. Footage. This is a species I've been trying to find here in America, in Florida, but it just seems like it's too hot in Florida for this guy. So I haven't found it yet, sadly. Um, another uh, another person who does something um, on social media is uh, my microscopic work. And yeah. he also found that recently, no, I think, like in, in um, Denmark. Yeah, yeah in Denmark. And, yes. Yeah, I saw that video. That's great. And uh, there's also uh, one person, David Seymour, C uh, I think. Um, he found it in Australia. And oh, really? It, yeah. Wow. And at the moment, um, I think he's um, he's in contact with uh, Professor G. So, like, great. they're trying to find some old footage that he recorded, like old photographs and stuff. And I think he, f he found it in 1996. So, it's like, yeah, it's there. Oh, people are finding those, it yeah. and like because of the yeah, social media. Those old sites. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the whole continent of Asia they haven't recorded it on or uh, 
the country. Yeah, do you want to share that? Species, so it would be great if anybody you know, watching is in those areas. There's a lot of really cool, really obvious secrets that are uh, out there to be found. It'd be really nice okay. contribution to uh, biogeography. You can share the screen as well, I think. And here, I think it was building because um, this is a city that builds um, like a little um, house for itself called Lorica. And I think um, it's it's trying to build a Lorica oh, here because one. this is like, um, uh, this is a pretty common uh, behavior with every Lorica building ciliates, like, uh, um, for example, with Stanton Roselli, and they, they just stay stationary and they go back and forth and they are just um, collecting like particles around them and um, binding them with some sort of a mucilage. I think they release, like maybe it's not, uh, it doesn't call it mucilage, but with um, some secretions, they are just collecting the particles around the, around them and then they are just building this uh, long uh, lorica. But um, mine was under a um, slide, so, so, so it didn't build the lorica in the end. I wasn't able to like record the whole thing. Mm. But yeah, it's a it's a gorgeous ciliate. Beautiful, yeah. Great footage too. And it's, uh, I think this one was around a uh, few millimeters long. This is yeah, like yeah. Uh, 200 wow. X magnification. Uh, so like a field of view around one millimeter. One, uh, one millimeter. So yeah. And, and they're only like 50 microns or so, 40 microns wide. So it's really a neat, a neat creature. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so what we have here will not be as beautiful, <laughs> but it will be live. I'm going to stop <laughs> sharing. Um, okay. And there are some things moving around and wriggling in there. So we'll try and see if we can right. find something. Okay. Ooh, there's something okay. alive. Something alive. It's most likely a cold for it. <laughs> I have a book next to me trying to identify one. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the Feusner book, eh? Yeah. Yeah. A series of like sexy rap. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's so like it's um like, yeah. underneath eight, the eight hundred page just on one group of CDA. Yeah. Then it's like exactly. Yeah, they are Yeah, so this Colpoda, uh, they're very common in soils and they make uh, resting cysts. So yeah. once they add water or add different foods, they'll, they'll come back to life. So pretty much immediately you're going to see Colpodids in these kind of samples. So that's probably our best guess. I mean, so we took water. this soil from the plant pot in this room. So, <laughs> so there's life seems... everywhere. Yeah, we're surrounded yeah. by yeah. There it is. So it does bob up and down a bit, making it hard to focus. Yeah, ciliates are not super easy to uh, to work with, that's for sure. The bigger ones are a bit easier sometimes, but not always. Can we get in closer? Oh. Very suspenseful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, the thing is, I'm sure you guys are aware that this actually takes a lot of time and patience, not seven minutes. Um, <laughs> but maybe we'll find something worth looking at. I'm going to go back up to, I think this is a hundred times or so. One of the difficult things is I'm not so used to using. Oh, that's the other one. Yeah, I went the wrong way, didn't I? On this one, bring it in. Let's see if it's oh, there's something tiny there. Yeah, I'll let uh, James identify that one. Yeah, which one's that <laughs> one, James? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in that orange book you have for sure. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's quite suspenseful in the sense, you know, looking for something alive. 
uh, and seeing what we find. And the cool thing with soil is too, there might be a lot of cysts which aren't yet you know, active. So if you were to feed it something or change the temperature, you might have a huge bloom of some species which is you know, cryptically present, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And we only added water to it like this afternoon. So, so maybe stuff. a couple of days would be a lot more and that's uh, another confounding problem you know, with identifying all these species. Yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on it then. We'll keep the, so the soil sample uh, yeah, yeah, around. Hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, Check it just add a grain of oatmeal or something and it's like yeah okay it's just gonna be like really cloudy around the like the food that you add and then they're gonna be like literally tens of thousands of ciliates yeah um, oh that'd be cool okay well we'll do this and then hopefully find something fun in okay. the next few days maybe i can show some videos I have to do. yeah do you have them, this, are they on this, this laptop yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got three more minutes before we have our scheduled break. So we'll just show a few final videos. Yeah, go for it. But at least we did find something alive. I think next time I should we should breed like a like a sample for several weeks on a radiator with a little bit of sugar and then see what we find in there. Absolutely. So yeah, this is a an upgrade from the microscope we had last year, although we still need to get used to using it and making great videos with it, but we hope to start using it a lot more at FEMS to make nice content. Great. Yeah. Practice. So yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. So Ooh. This was a yeah, play it again. So what was it, Lenny? You can tell us. Oh yeah, well, this was from the Delft Canals, and it looks like a turtle, but I found out that it was actually a Daphnia. Um, yeah, so, um, well, I put a cover slip on it, and then I killed it, and then I could take a nice picture of it. <laughs> But yeah, I, I quite found that if I add the cover slips, they die. Well, wow. if they're big enough, they get killed. Um, you need a little well slide, a little well in it. Um, okay. We'll buy some of those then. So did it spread, yeah, with the, the well slides, the issue is like you cannot get good focus. So you need to, That's like I, I use like flat well slides, slide. but I put... Um, so this is how it looked like when I kill it. Uh, close up. Yeah. Great image. Um, this was the same, but I just added some color to it. How it looks a little bit smushed up. Um, maybe we can look at this video. Um, um, it's called, I think, um, Simocephalus. Um, so yeah, this is like a the whole body, but it was fascinated because you could see it breathing <laughs> at some at some stage. Oh, did it have like a, a gill or something? Yeah. Oh, um, Does that video play? Or did you share it? Uh, mm, let me just see how it... Um, bees are not playing. Okay. Our final video. It just happens that they swim quite fast, so it's just really hard to um, chase them under the microscope when it's like. Um, so yeah, so sketchy. Yeah, I think it's at the end that I got it. Yay. It's just difficult when they fly and then it's difficult to, um, you know, get a, a close up. Yeah. Okay. We know, trust us. <laughs> Do you have any tips? Uh, I like to make a bunch of slides and let them wait for a little while because as the water might evaporate or as the light might start to, start to bother them, they'll start to slow down. So there's that sweet spot before they die or they get smushed. 
but they're just slow enough. So that's what I do for, for ciliates especially. Mm, okay. And the more you watch these things, the more you get to know the motion. So it's a bit like a video game. You can follow so this along. is my best. Lovely. This is my best shot, I think. <laughs> Very <artistic. laughs> <the> there. <laughs> I was like, get in the middle. Yeah, that's kind of, you, you can see the heartbeat yeah. in there on the left. Yeah. There, like you can you can see the muscles um, controlling the eye. So that circular part is its heart, and then yeah, the um, it has like internal legs that it uses to for respiration and stuff like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> this was like my second try on this microscope. Um, you did great. Yeah. 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 Well done. You had fun doing it, so it matters. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks. I found it quite hard, like, to get the technique ready because I tried like not putting a cover slip, but then putting a cover slip killed some of them. Um, I'm sure it's just in time. yeah. Uh, There's plenty of Daphne out there, so plenty of time to figure it out. Ooh, we're hooked under. Yeah, as you say, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the microscope session because we had to have a short break and then restart the streams because Facebook puts an eight hour limit on streams, which is very irritating. But um, thank you both guys for joining us today and showing us your videos and chatting to us about microscopy and hopefully inspiring some other people to go and uh, do their own microscopy and put it online. Thanks and uh, yeah, time. appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, it's been great fun. Uh, tomorrow is International Microorganism Day uh, for everyone here. I think it is already International Microorganism Day in Japan and in India and in China. Um, but I hope you celebrate tomorrow as best you can on a nice Friday evening and tell everyone you can that it's International Microorganism Day. And uh, yeah, we'll bid you farewell. And thank you for joining us on the live stream. Thank you so much. Thanks. Here you go, guys. Thanks a lot. No worries. We'll see you soon. Right. So we're going to have a small break. Um, and then we will see you on the other side of that break in roughly 20 minutes or so. But yeah, see you soon.